Frodo and Sam continue their mission to destroy the ring. Using the rope gifted by Galadriel, they climb down Amun Law, but got lost at the foot of the mountain. Frodo sensed that something was following them. During the night, Gollum approached while they were sleeping. He had always been drawn to the ring. However, Frodo and Sam pretended to be asleep. Gollum was discovered by two people, and the three of them started fighting. Frodo held a sword against Gollum's neck, and he gave up resistance. Sam tied up Gollum with the elven rope, which caused him intense burning pain. Gollum pleaded for them to release him and promised not to harm them. Sam didn't believe Gollum's words. Frodo, on the other hand, felt pity for him and agreed to untie the elven rope on the condition that Gollum would lead them to Mordor. Gollum kept his promise and guided them on their way. Gollum was not completely free from the ring's influence. Once enslaved by the ring, he could never escape its control unless it was destroyed. Goblins captured Pippin and Merry. They believed that the two possessed the ring, so they didn't kill them. Instead, they hurried to Isengard to hand them over to Saruman. Merry was injured and weak. Pippin knew that Aragorn and the others would never abandon them, so he discreetly left a clue behind to guide them. At that moment, Aragorn and the others were closely following the goblins. They found the clue left by Pippin and then encountered a pair of Rohan horsemen. Saruman had formed an alliance with Sauron and began attacking the forces of men. Rohan, being close to Saruman's Isengard, became the primary target of the attack. The King of Rohan had fallen under Saruman's spell and became a puppet who obeyed his every command. He showed no emotion even upon hearing his son's death. What Aragorn and his friends encountered were the cavalry who had been driven out by the king. Eomer, the king's nephew, knew that the kingdom was being controlled. He wanted to kill Grimma, Saruman's spy, but was unsuccessful and ended up being exiled himself. On their way out, they defeated a troop of goblins who happened to be the ones who had captured Pippin and Merry. However, Aomer claimed they didn't find any survivors and gave the three of them two swift horses before leaving. Aragorn and the others believed that Pippin and Merry were dead. However, the evidence left behind indicated that Pippin and Merry had escaped into the nearby Fangorn Forest. Fangorn is a magical forest inhabited by ancient creatures called Ents. Pippin and Merry were being chased by goblins and ended up entering Fangorn. However, they disturbed the slumbering Ents. Although the Ents helped them escape, there seems to be some connection between the Ents and the White Wizard. So, they were taken to the presence of the White Wizard. The rescue team bravely ventured into Fangorn Forest to search for Pippin and Merry. Suddenly, a white light appeared, and the three of them thought it was Saruman. They launched an attack on person within the white light. But when the light faded, they realized that the person was actually Gandalf. It turned out that Gandalf didn't die when he fell into the abyss. He fought a deadly battle with the Balrog in the depths of the Earth's core. And although victorious, he also perished. But sorcerers are sub-gods and originally did not have form. He took on the appearance of an old man and came to Middle-earth to help the people in their fight against Sauron, following the will of Iluvatar. Now, his physical body has died, and his spirit has been sent back to the presence of Iluvatar. Iluvatar believed that Gandalf's task was not yet complete and bestowed upon him even greater power. Thus, Gandalf returned to Middle-earth once again. The Ents took care of Pippin and Merry, so Aragorn group doesn't need to worry about them. There are more important tasks awaiting them now. Saruman and Sauron's armies are about to attack humanity. They need to unite the various forces of humanity to resist the enemy's assault. Therefore, Gandalf led Aragorn and the others to the capital of Rohan, Edoras. Rohan has already been infiltrated by Saruman's spies. Gandalf approached King Theoden and used a spell to break Saruman's control over him and drove out Grimma. Theoden finally regained his senses. After learning about his son's death, he was overcome with grief. He informed Theoden that the Uruk High Army would soon be at their doorstep. Moreover, when Eomer was exiled, he took a large number of riders with him. So, their manpower is insufficient to engage in battle with the enemy. Therefore, Theoden ordered everyone to retreat to Helm's Deep. Theoden wanted to use the advantage of the terrain to fend against the enemy's attack. However, Gandalf knew that it wouldn't be enough to stop the enemy's advance. He asked Aragorn and the others to stay here while he went to fetch reinforcements. He told Aragorn to look towards the east at dawn five days later. Aragorn bid farewell to Gandalf. He saw a restless horse in the stable, which was the prince's mount. 
After the prince's death, no one could appease him. Aragorn grew up in Rivendell and could speak Elvish, which animals could understand. The horse gradually calmed down after listening. Meanwhile, Elwyn also noticed Aragorn. She was attracted by Aragorn's charisma and developed a different kind of feeling. But when she learned that Aragorn was already 80, three years old, and had a beloved elven princess, she suppressed these feelings deep in her heart. At this moment, the retreating team encountered goblin cavalry. The king led the soldiers to fight and covered the civilians to retreat first. Aragorn and the other two followed. After a fierce battle, the enemy was successfully annihilated. But Aragorn was dragged down the cliff, his fate unknown. Legolas and Gimli looked down the cliff, filled with grief. Of the original nine-member expedition, only the two of them remained. They fought together and helped each other along the way, improving their relationship. They followed Theoden to Helm's Deep. Meanwhile, Elwyn stood still in shock upon learning of Aragorn's death in battle. On the other side, Frodo and Sam followed Gollum out of Amun La and arrived at the Dead Marshes. This place was once the battlefield between the Last Alliance and Sauron. Countless humans, elves, and orcs died here, eventually forming a marsh that imprisoned souls. Ordinary people dare not set foot in this place. Not even birds can cross it. However, Gollum found a path that directly led to the entrance of Mordor, the Dark Door. Frodo saw many corpses in the marsh, but Gollum warned them not to look, otherwise, they would also become part of the dead. But Frodo couldn't resist. He stared at the bodies in the water. In the end, he almost fell into the marsh. Fortunately, Gollum pulled him out in time. Frodo became curious about Gollum. In the evening, he talked about Gollum's past, which he had heard from Gandalf. He even pronounced Gollum's former name, Smeagol. Gollum mumbled his own name, as if he had become a different person. He completely lost his cunning and sly appearance, transforming into a somewhat timid and pitiful individual. Suddenly, they heard a strange cry from above as a ring wraith rode a fallen monster flying across the sky. Frodo's wound, previously pierced by the ring wraith, also began to ache. The three of them quickly took cover, and fortunately, the ring wraith did not discover them, flying away into the distance. Frodo and the others continued on their journey. They finally crossed the dead marshes and arrived at the northern entrance, the Dark Door, to enter Mordor. However, the guards at the Dark Door were too numerous. Frodo initially thought of trying his luck to sneak in, but Gollum told Frodo about another, more hidden path they could take. Sam believed that Gollum had ulterior motives, but Frodo chose to trust Gollum because he had been enduring the torment of the ring and felt sympathy for him. Gollum was indeed slowly changing, struggling internally. Sometimes he would be ruthless and vicious, wanting to seize the ring, and other times he would be timid and treat Frodo as a friend. Eventually, the evil Gollum was driven away, leaving behind the kind-hearted Smeagol. The three continued through the secret passage leading to Mordor. On their way, they saw a group of Haradrim people. They traveled to Mordor in a tall mammoth colossus. At that moment, the Hurridrim suddenly came under attack. They were caught off guard and were instantly defeated. The attackers were one of the greatest forces of men, Gondor. Just as Rohan prepares to resist Saruman's attack, Gondor's side is in high gear defending against Mordor's invasion. Frodo and his companions were also discovered by Gondor soldiers and captured. They were interrogated by the general, and Frodo had no choice but to reveal everything. He lied and claimed that the ring was not in his possession. Upon hearing this, the general's expression suddenly filled with sadness. It turned out that he was Faramir, Boromir's brother. Boromir was killed on his way to deliver the ring. Faramir was deeply saddened by this news. Currently, Gondor had no rightful king and was being ruled by Denethor as the steward. He was also the father of Boromir and Faramir. Denethor favored Boromir greatly but constantly opposed Faramir. In such situations, Boromir would stand up to their father to protect his younger brother, leading to a strong bond between them. However, Faramir also desired his father's approval. So when he captured Gollum and interrogated him, discovering that the ring was with Frodo, a flame of vanity and desire for recognition ignited within him. Thus, 
He set out with the three of them to Gondor, in exchange for his father's favor. Gollum once again lost trust in others, and awakened his evil persona. On the other hand, Aragorn, who fell off the cliff, was washed ashore by the river. Horse awakened him, and carried Aragorn on its back, bringing him back to Helm's Deep. Aragorn was not dead, which made Gimli and Legolas very happy. Owen's face also showed a smile, but when she saw the token that Arwen had given to Aragorn, she suppressed her feelings once again. An army of over 10,000 Uruk, I was about to attack. They would arrive at the walls of Helm's Deep under the cover of night. Theoden had no choice but to order every man capable of wielding a weapon, regardless of age, to join the battle. Aragorn believed that they couldn't just wait there to die, and that they should immediately send someone to request reinforcements from Gondor. However, Gondor was also preparing for a major battle with Mordor and had no additional manpower to assist Rohan. Moreover, the alliance between the two kingdoms had long been in name only. The elderly and children of Rohan picked up weapons one after another. Theoden also put on his armor, ready to lead his people in facing the enemy together. Aragorn all three knew that Rohan's life was in jeopardy. However, they choose to stay here and protect the people of Rohan. Suddenly, the sound of horns spreads throughout Helm's Deep, but it's not an attack from the Uruk. Hi, it's the arrival of elven reinforcements. The presence of the elves boosts the morale of the people of Rohan. However, it still can't compare to the 10,000 strong Uruk, high army. They nervously guard the walls of Helm's Deep. Then, it starts to rain, and the Uruk, high army slowly approaches Helm's Deep in the pouring rain. Both sides are on edge, ready for battle. Soon, as a Uruk, high falls, the enemy launches a fierce assault. Aragorn commands the elves, utilizing their exceptional archery skills to halt the Uruk, High's advance. The Uruk High Army, undeterred by death, withstands the arrow storm and employs the tactic of using a human wave to set up siege ladders. They climb up the walls of Helm's Deep one after another. The battle unfolds on the walls. Helm's Deep is under prolonged attack. So, the Uruk High resort to explosives, made by Saruman, with a loud blast, a breach is created in the walls of Helm's Deep. Aragorn has been blown out of the sky. He slowly stands up, with the people who still need his protection behind him. He leads the elven soldiers and charges toward the Uruk, high army. But with the breach in the walls, Helm's Deep is no longer defensible. The walls have been breached, and they can only defend the inner valley and the main gate. Now they're in a desperate situation. Aragorn doesn't give up, and he continues to organize the soldiers to guard the last gate against the Uruk. Hi. However, Theoden has lost all hope, unable to find a way to survive. Aragorn tells him to charge out with him. For the people, Theoden is reignited with fighting spirit by Aragorn's words. At that moment, the sun slowly rises from the east, casting its light into the castle. Aragorn recalls Gandalf's promise before he left. It is now the dawn of the fifth day, so Aragorn opens the castle gate. Leading the riders of Rohan, they charge out. They break through the Uruk, high army like a force of nature, charging forward. At the same time, as the sun rises, Saruman appears on the mountaintop. Soon after, Eomer and his cavalry appear behind Gandalf. With a roar to save the king, they charge towards the enemy. The Uruk, high are defeated, and the Battle of Helm's Deep is won. Under Eomer's return, the Kingdom of Rohan finally achieves redemption. On the other side, Pippin and Merry are trying to convince the Ents to join the war. But the Ents show indifference and a lofty attitude, as if it's none of their business. Pippin leads the Ents to the southern part of Fangorn Forest, because the trees there have been completely cut down by Saruman. When the Ents see the desolate scene before them, they can no longer tolerate it and lead their kin in an attack on Isengard. They open the dam in Isengard, causing a flood that sweeps away countless goblins. The Ents, with their massive bodies, withstand the flood and ultimately destroy Isengard. The crisis on Frodo's side is not yet resolved when Faramir brings Frodo and the others back to Gondor, intending to hand them over to his father. At this moment, Sam shouts at him, asking if he knows how his brother died. His brother was driven mad by his greed for the power of the ring and died under the sword of a goblin. 
Faramir ponders for a moment, hesitating. Just then, the forces of Mordor attack Gondor. Angmar rides fell beasts, circling above Gondor. Meanwhile, the ring's influence on Frodo deepens. He actually stands before a ring wraith, intending to hand over the ring. Fortunately, Sam stops him in time. Frodo, in a daze, cannot distinguish friend from foe and points his sword at Sam's neck. Only when he regains his senses does he realize what he has done. Frodo feels exhausted, knowing that he is just an ordinary hobbit. He cannot bear the responsibility of saving the world. Sam slowly stood up and said he understood his pain. He says that many people have had many opportunities to give up, but they didn't. They decided to press on because they hold a belief. Frodo asks what belief they hold. Sam pulls Frodo close and answers, There is still goodness in the world, and that is the reason to fight. Faramir, moved by Sam's words, is finally able to understand the mission Frodo must undertake. Taking the risk of being executed, he lets them go. Frodo and the others embark on their journey once again. Frodo tells Sam that he would not have gotten far without him. The two friends reconcile and continue their march towards Mount Doom. However, at this moment, Gollum, who has regained his evil persona, is plotting something terrifying. It seems that Frodo's dangerous journey is far more than that. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.